history tells us that most family run businesses in India generally don't make it to the second generation and even fewer make it to the third. Be it the Birlas, Mafatlas, Goenkas, Singanias, Bajaj or Ambani's, they've all split. The split in some cases like the RPG group, Godrej group, Munjal group has been very friendly. This was largely because succession planning was put in place by the founder promoter while he was alive. In other cases, lack of succession planning has led to acrimonious battle. We saw that happen in the Mafatal family and in recent times among Ambani brothers. But can a company survive, thrive and grow if it is set up by two business families? Well, the answer is a big yes if one talks to the promoters of B. Billy Mori and Company, a leading EPC contractor who built many landmark buildings across Mumbai. This company set up some 52 years ago by B.G. Bilimoria and Lakshmi Das Kaparya shows how two partners can run a business successfully into the second generation if roles are clearly defined between them. Take a look at the B.E. Bilimoria and Company story. It tells you how a partnership firm can make it big. Leave no stones unturned seems to be the unwritten code of this company. Little wonder that in the last 52 years, this company has been able to construct every landmark building in the city of Mumbai. Cherry picking iconic projects seems to have become a habit for B.E. Bilimoria and Company, a renowned EPC contractor that specializes in building residential, commercial, industrial and utility complexes. Interestingly, by just following their work trail, one could have a good Mumbai Darshan. Here's how. At the tip of South Mumbai in Cup Parade stands the imposing white facade, 26-storied IGBI Tower. As one moves towards CST station, the ornately designed 19-storied Hajj House that provides accommodation to the Hajj-bound Muslims greet you. This one on Marine Drive, which no cricket fan can miss, is the famous Wankhede Stadium. As you move towards north near Mahalakshmi Temple Signal, this simple white building, the Cadbury House, triggers fond memories. A stone's throw from there leads one to the dome-shaped iconic Nehru Planetarium at Worli, frequented by school children. Asia's biggest dome theatre, IMAX, housed at Vadala, beckons you. From there, as you head towards the Sahar International Airport, you cannot miss the five-star chains, the Leela Hotel or Hyatt Regency. Looking at all these projects, the message that comes out loud and clear is that B.E. Billimoria and Company make architects' dreams come alive. B.E. Billimoria and Company is a company of innovations. Now, we have constructed a lot of landmark buildings in Mumbai, which even today are being appreciated and shown to the visitors as landmarks. Then so many buildings around, which are more than 25 story building, which were constructed 30 years back when today's technology and mechanization was not at all available. We brought the aluminum system from, work from Canada for the first time in the country when even the big players were hesitant to get it. Historically, the 780 crore company has been Mumbai centric, but today it has a pan India presence. For the Commonwealth Games in Delhi, the company constructed at a record pace of 22 months. 5,000 seating capacity air conditioners, table tennis court, and badminton stadium at a cost of 320 crore rupees. Today, the company has more than 30 to 35 projects in the pipeline, ranging from hospitals, hotels, residential complexes, commercial complexes, low cost housing projects, IT parks, warehouses, medical colleges to flyovers and bridges in different parts of the country. The seed of today's success was sown some five decades ago. B.G. Edulji Bilimoria was a car mechanic running his own garage at Pune, while Lakshmi Das Kalyanji Kapadia was a tiles manufacturer. It was by sheer coincidence that they both came together as part of the consortium to construct the Pune runaway project. This blossomed into a partnership firm. That was 1958. The Pune airport project emboldened the confidence of Beji Bellimoria. So he gave up his garage business and moved lock, stock and barrel to Mumbai in search of more such contracts. Kapadia, who had a running business, decided to stay back in Pune for some more time till his partner could bag a couple of contracts. In Mumbai, Bilimoria managed to 
quickly back two prestigious contracts. One was to construct the Tata Institute of Social Sciences building at Deonar and the other was Mumbai University Clubhouse on Churchgate's B Road. As BG Billamoria was canvassing for jobs, the firm came to be known as BE Billamoria and Company. Soon, Kapatia too moved to Mumbai. Slowly but surely, prestigious jobs came their way. Chairman N.C. Parameshwaran, who joined the firm in 1960 as a junior engineer, explains the founder promoter's guiding philosophy, which holds good even today. The founders of this company, Mr. B. Bilamoria and Mr. L.K. Kapadia, from the day one, their philosophy was that we should fulfill the commitment 100 percent, nothing less. Commitment regarding completion of the work, commitment regarding the quality of the work. There was no compromise on these two issues. This is what was uh, uh, liked by all the clients who really valued time. By 1981, with 250 employees on its roll, the company posted a modest turnover of 23 crore rupees. The company's reputation spread, but promoters did not leverage on this strength as they were very conservative and cautious and was people driven but not systems driven. This was the company's biggest drawback. The second generation that joined the business, Digant Kapadia, a civil engineer from VJTI in 1980, and Kayos Bilimoria, a CA from England and Wales in 1982, tried to put systems in place but could not make big changes because of their father's conservatism. After working at various levels for two decades, their big moment arrived in 2003 when they were appointed managing directors with the founders retiring. At that time, there were 360 people on the roll and turnover was around 250 crore rupees. In the next six years, Digant and Kayos made some sweeping changes. This changed the complexion of the game. To start with, they moved from a very cramped office at Churchgate under the stand of the Wankade Stadium to a 20,000 square foot office at Worley's Shivsagar Estate. To put systems in place, they asked Monesh Pansali, the company's financial consultant for 26 years, to come on board as CFO. I joined the company four years back when the second generation uh, took over the reins of the company. They needed to have controls established as they were planning to have a pan-India presence and to spread all over the country. For doing this, they wanted someone who could get an ERP system in place, MIS systems in place, as well as uh, establish controls and uh, internal control systems to ensure that decision-making process becomes simpler for the management. To ensure that no business was lost, they entered into a series of joint ventures with Gammon India, RSB Infrastructure, Mahindra Life Space Developers. In the case of Gammon, it was for executing contracts in the UAE as well as for constructing the Mumbai Nasik Expressway on a BOT basis. In the case of Mahindra, it was for developing residential projects in Nagpur. Parallelly, Digant and Kayos were trying to raise money and unlock values. Initially, they toyed with the idea of an IPO. At this point in time, on the advice of their banker, they met the private equity player Indivision Capital headed by Samir Sain. The chemistry worked. Indivision pumped in money and picked up stake. They brought a lot of value to the company in all areas of the business. Today, the promoters hold 36% stake, Indivision 30% and private investors 34%. But in all these, the company has not sacrificed the bottom line to grow its business. Our corporate philosophy has been, one, if you see the tagline of our company, it's building relationships and 
Second, which I would say, so do my MDs, that we are in the business of construction to make money. So we do not, and we persevere not to, sacrifice bottom line at the cost of top line. Clients are impressed with them for timely execution and commitments. A case in point is the 27-story expensive home being built in South Mumbai by Mukesh Ambani. The construction of Antilia has been completed by BE Bilimoria and Company. With many of their clients, they have long-term relationships. We are associated with them since 2004 and uh, they started off in Mumbai with Planet Godridge, uh, the tallest residential building at that time, uh, 48 stories high, extremely dedicated people. Uh, then we did projects with them in Thane, a 23-story residential tower, a commercial project in uh, Pune called Godridge Eternia. So the, we've done several projects with them. What has attracted us is that uh, the top management is very committed uh, very approachable, uh, they are committed to timely delivery of projects, high quality standards. Clearly, the second generation promoter's aggressive plans are yielding results. In the last three years, its turnover has risen from 290 crore rupees in 2007-2008 to 667 crore rupees in 2008-2009 to 780 crore rupees in 2009-2010. The employee strength has touched 1200. The order book is in the region of 1500 crore rupees. In the last 52 years, the company has completed over 500 projects and promoters are seriously toying of re-entering the infrastructure space in a big way by pitching for roads and ports. Looking at the mood in the organization, it certainly seems upbeat. At this point in time, we need to take a short commercial break. When we come back, we will talk to Kayos Bilimoria and Digant Kapadia, the second generation promoters, to find out what is their vision for this family run business. Also joining us on the show will be Puneet Chadha of HSBC, who gives us the banker's view.